Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello everybody and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of the Burn, Nick, and with me today, it's Mike Brinker. Good afternoon everybody. How you doing today, Nick? I'm good. How are you, buddy? Doing good, doing good. So we're in the Jerry Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios in uh, Mike's garage here. Yeah, down in Mike's garage. Down in Mike's garage. And uh, Mike has some special cigars for us to smoke today. Yes. What have we got? Uh, we've got some H. Upman Habanos. Little little petite Coronas here. Yeah. A little uh, Cuba love. Okay. So we're going to be doing our par- patriotic duty today and burning some contraband. Right. Love it. Love yeah. it. Love I, uh, it. I ordered some boxes. These are from 2017, 2018 maybe. Okay. And I've got three left, and we're smoking two of them. Love it. Okay. So we're going to do our patriotic duty. We're going to burn some contraband, and we're just going to chat. We're going to yeah. chat. Um, so why don't we go ahead and prep the cigars, and uh, it's time to cut the cigar. The official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company, Crestwood, Missouri. And uh, guys... You know, I've been saying it for a little bit. We're starting to get to the point where the weather is consistently nice, which makes that 1,500 square foot covered patio out there at Riverman Cigar Company so nice to chill out in front of because, you know, we, let's be real. We've been cooped up inside all winter long. You know, it gets smoky in the lounges and things of that nature. It's nice to go outside, get the fresh air and, and uh, you know, enjoy your cigar. And so if you come by Riverman, you can bring your lawn chair can sit out in front of the shop you know talk to people as they come and go talk to you know the staff and everybody it's observe good, the sunset it's a great time it's a great <clears> time <throat> and dan's got all kinds of great cigars over there he always has a really great selection of uh arturo fuente like some of the rare fuentes and things of that nature full line of aladino i mean there's all kinds of great cigars at riverman cigar company you're going to try so make sure if you're in the st louis area you swing on by and say hey and if you're not in the St. Louis area, he does do mail order, so you can give him a call, and he can get a nice shipment of cigars sent to you right away. It's Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri, and with that, it's time to go ahead and cut the cigar. I didn't nuke myself. No, I didn't. Good. I was worried that I didn't clear the chamber from the last time I used this. That's all I ever hear. What? You never clear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. You do when we're just out smoking. It's just when you get ready to film, you're like, oh. I know. I always end up just destroying myself. But, uh, okay, so I'm going to take a picture of this guy because I'll be honest. I don't, I don't, do, I don't do these I don't really the either. Regular. You know, I bought a few boxes of different stuff. And, uh, you know, nowadays, just from what, everything you hear, it's like trying to get a hold of good Cubans anyway, oh. even through the legitimate, you know, Source. Sources yeah. like I had, you know, in 2017, it was a whole different deal. Well, and my God, the prices on these things have just gone right. through the roof, you know. For the three boxes I bought, I got these. Uh, I can't think of the second box. And then I got some. Uh, well, I can't think of any of the other boxes I got. <laughs> okay. It'll come to me after the show. But anyway, it, it came out to like, was shipping like $8 a stick. This has got such a nice cedar taste to the cold mm-hmm. draw. I mean, I guess if it's been chilling in your humidor this long, it would probably have right. taken that on. But, yeah, my God, the cedar taste on the uh, cold draw is just But, this, you know, intense. they had a really great flavor right away, too. Okay. Because I couldn't help, you know. Well, yeah, you oh, get them in. Bolivar. I got some Bolivars. Okay. Because I've always loved Bolivar. All right. But, well, uh, I'm going to fire this guy up because I am... Uh, now this isn't exactly a. Uh, this. this isn't exactly a forty-five minute to hour smoke by any means, but they were all good. I haven't smoked one in probably a year or so. That's all right. I have other cigars here, so that if uh, we end up going longer, you know, I can uh, always always move on to something else. But this plus, I've got some other treasures that have been hiding in my humidor for a while. Oh, well, I mean, you know, we can feel free to break into whatever treasures you want, or I can smoke what I brought. So, oh, I brought you something. Did I give you that already? Yes. Okay, okay. I went ahead and threw it in my humidor. 
Just making sure that I remembered. I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget <coughs> and go home with it. Anyway, wow. so. Take those off now. So, Mike, it's been a minute. How the hell you been? I have been doing good. I've been extremely busy. I'm, I'm that guy that you're always referring to as <laughs> everyone's been too busy. Everyone's here. been busy. Well, it's not just been you. It's been a lot of people. So, yeah. And I understand. I mean, look, it's, it's a commitment. One I've taken on, but I, right. I, you know, I get it. I'm in that weird spot that I'm sure some of our listeners are in, where my elderly parents are transitioning to forever nursing homes and not being able to do anything for themselves anymore, yeah. and trying to clear out from one place to move here to eventually move somewhere else. So I've got shit everywhere. I've, <laughs> yeah. That's it's been it's, a it's been a it's journey. not an easy time of life. Plus my health issues. Well, yeah, and that's which the, you, you know, know some people know about them, some don't. But yeah. you know, I ain't I ain't the healthiest guy here. I mean, it's all right. You know, I mean, some may say the same about me, but <laughs> but anyway, the bottom line is you've got a lot going on, and I totally get that. Now, at some point, whenever life happens to sort itself out, you know, you're going to be transitioning from here to Georgia. Yes. And so you'll have that going on. Now, that'll put you, I believe I did the math, I, or I looked it up one time. I think you're going to be about four hours from I'm gonna Palm Coast. I'm going to be about Coast. four hours from Pulpit Fest in Florida. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, for those of you interested in Pulpit Fest, again, I said it on uh, the last show. I think I announced it when, when Dave was on that uh, we are bumping up in, in, close to the ceiling on uh, tickets for Pulpit Fest. So if you're interested in attending Pulpit Fest, you're going to want to head over to Eventbrite, B-R-I-T-E dot com, and search for Pulpit Fest and get your complimentary tickets reserved because um, there is going to have to be a cap because Ken's shop is only so big. There's only so much room, you know, in the courtyard and everything that we can take up. And, uh, you know, we can't just have full run of the place, you know. So, um there is a cap as turn in terms of how many people can attend, and so um, if you're gonna be if you are planning on going but you haven't gone to Eventbrite yet, make sure you get over there because uh, we need we need to have the head count. But anyway, um, it sounds like a good problem to have that you're having. Dude, I'm right thrilled. Now. I mean, I did not anticipate I mean, we're in this. April. <laughs> Exa- well, no, I didn't anticipate this. I figured I'd be hawking tickets for this thing all the way up till it, and. Uh, in fact, it's gone the opposite way to where, like, I'm going to be cutting off tickets probably... By the end of April. By the end of April to where I'll have May, June, and July where it's like, hey, guys, sorry, you, you waited too long, you know? And so I didn't anticipate this, but there's some cool stuff we're plotting and planning. Ken and I spoke the other last week, and, um, you know, we've got uh, we've got some cool stuff that we're planning, locking down some guests, getting giveaways put together coming up with games and things to do. I mean, and that's it's, another it's thing. going to be an intense when, thing. When you're trying to book guests, when you can tell them, hey, it's April, I've already sold out of tickets. That's big. They're going to show. Exactly. You know, if they can make it, you know, they're going to be like, okay, this ain't going to be like four or five people, you know. Yeah, no, this is, this is going to be, you know, well, I mean, realistically, just putting this out there for everybody, the max on this is only 50. I mean, this is, this is only 50. So this is this is a select group of people, but hey, you know what? It's gonna be, it's gonna be a packed group, and uh, you know there might be spouses that kind of tag along and everything. We're that that that's one thing. Our big concern is more count for smokers and giveaways. Exactly, smokers. You know, I want to know how many smokers are gonna actually be there, but uh, still, it's gonna be a fun time. Looking forward to that, and uh, you know, have you booked your ticket yet? I have not. <laughs> I kind of thought maybe I'd have an in. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. But for head count, if purposes, I start like walking with a limp or something, it probably you know? wouldn't hurt for you just to go ahead for head count. Yes, purposes, just so yeah. that I don't forget. I need to get on Bauer about that too. I will do that tonight. That's fine. We'll take care of it. It'll be all right. Anyway, um, so otherwise, um, I'm trying to think. What else is going on that you and I can? Well, I know on? this is going to. We're filming on a Thursday. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a Tuesday show. It is. Uh, O.J. Simpson died this morning. <laughs> he did, and you know what? He can rest easy knowing that Nicole Brown's uh, killer has finally died, and uh, he can rest easy knowing that. Yeah. 
And I'm not going to get into guilt or innocence, <laughs> but he was one hell of a running back. You know what? Uh, but, th- but the problem is he won't be remembered for that. No. You know no. that full well. His legacy is not going to be that. You know? And yes, the court of law said that he was found not guilty. I get that. But dude, come on. <laughs> one one court come of on. law. One court of law. That's true. The civil suit... And then his Put other suit it. that he got arrested for in Vegas, he did nine years for that. That's true. You're right. You know, that that, yeah. that was hard time. That yeah. was. And let's be And I think that full well was. They wanted a second chance. The jury him. caught it, and they, they, they did the most they could to get him back for a slight of justice before. But such is life. It is what it is. But, yeah. Nope. Oh, O.J. Simpson, 76. And I will say this. Hey, he did get off. What? He did get off, though, on that first one. He did. That's he not did. an easy thing to do. Oh, I mean, I don't hey. care how much money you got. Look the, at the glo- Sam Bankman Freed. He's the, going to prison for like 15 years. The glove did not fit. The, so they must have quit. Yeah. It's what it is. But I will say this. I don't wish anybody dead, and I definitely don't wish anybody cancer. And so say what you will about O.J. Simpson. True judgment is happening right now. Precisely. If he was innocent... <coughs> he's up there. He's up there. Otherwise, he went south. But and, uh, unless you know. he unless he confessed and prayed for you know, reconciliation, you know, true, you know, depends on your faith. Hey, it, I don't yeah, know I was, what faith he was. I don't I, know what faith our listeners are. I'm sure it's a lot. Say, it all has to. It, it's all up to him. But uh, anyway, but I don't wish cancer a uh, cancer death on anybody. So no. I feel bad for OJ Simpson in that regard. That's that's a hell of a bad way to go. So. Anyway, but I know, dude, I was recording earlier and my phone is just blowing up from people texting me about O.J. Simpson. And I'm just like, (laughs) okay, okay, I know, I know. (laughs) Oh, God. So I haven't really discussed it here on the show yet, but like um, by the time this airs, last week was the whole big eclipse. Right. Did you do anything for that? I slept through it all. Okay. That's I had fine. treatment that morning, so. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I went out with the pieces of paper and did the dot, you know, onto the paper to look at how the sun was and everything. It's a weird experience. I remember I, I, it from I ex- 2017. Yeah, I experienced it 2017. Our entire warehouse shut down for like three hours mm. so we could all sit outside and watch it. Oh. We all had glasses and everything. They provided glasses. It, it was a. For that company, it was a really surprising it was a deal. Big deal. But, yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I just my whole thing with is how like eerie everything feels when it's happening. Right. How like it gets to be nighttime, but it's not nighttime. It's like a weird blue light kind of thing. And then the birds stop chirping. The bugs start going nuts. It gets all cool. Lights come on. Yeah, it's just, it's weird. It's a very weird feeling when that goes on. And I don't know how it was throughout the different parts of the country that it hit with totality, but we were close to it here. Yeah. You know, uh, down south. I was going to say, if we'd have gone about an hour and a half down south, we probably would have been right right in there. And I know they said the trip back. Mm. The two-hour trip back from Cape Girardeau, yep. you can look it up, to St. Louis, which is about two hours, Yep, took eight hours. So gas, I, gas stations were running out of fuel. Uh, you could well, I mean, it was just a madhouse. The problem was you have people going down at various different times all throughout the weekend, going down, hitting cabins, things of that mm-hmm. nature. But they all come back at the same time. Right. And, yeah, it's just a shit show. And uh, I have a friend of mine. She drives for Uber. She was driving around, and she ended up getting caught in some of that doing an Uber drive, and it wrecked her whole night doing Uber because of the traffic and everything. Right. Like, even from St. Louis to Festus, which is about a half-hour drive, they said that was taking two, three hours. Yep. Because people trying to, thinking they could just drive down there that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. It was was cool to watch on the news, all these cars. I mean, I-55 didn't clear up until about 11 p.m., they said. I had my tax appointment that morning, and so... Leaving my place, which I just live in little Freeburg, Illinois, but Route 15 comes through town. So leaving my place, it's bumper to bumper all through town. Which you'd never see. Going south. Which No, dude, you don't see anywhere near that traffic in my town. Then um, that went for quite a ways. Then I end up snaking up by Scott Air Force Base, which 
for most listeners, they have no idea what I'm talking about. But Air Mobility Drive, which runs in front of Scott, crosses over I-64 heading uh, east. And the traffic, when you were crossing over, I could look on the eastbound 64. The traffic went as far as the eye could see both directions. Yeah. And it's both lanes, bumper to bumper, nobody moving. So then I'm moving, I'm going up Scott Troy Road because my bookkeeper's up in Maryville, which, again, Google all this if you want to know the actual geography. But I'm taking Scott Troy Road north. Well, Scott Troy Road south, which leads to the 64 interchange I was just discussing. Was jammed. Was jammed bumper to bumper. So all I'm thinking is, how am I going to get home well, when see, this tax meeting is over? But by then, everyone was where everybody they wanted to was be. where Exactly. So it was no big deal. But see, you know, with all these navigation systems, people are trying to be smart and mm. thinking they're outsmarting the traffic. And there was just there was no way to get south. No, you couldn't do from St. Louis without extreme traffic. It was going to be bad no matter what you did. And now I understand. I think I brought it up before, maybe in private or something. The Department of Conf- Conservation of Missouri for the last month or two had been saying, if you're going to go and enjoy the eclipse. Make sure you're stocked up on food, water, and gasoline. Now you get it. Now I get it. They knew this shit was going to get... They weren't talking about end-of-the-world stuff. They were talking about a million people yeah. trying to get into you're a gonna small town like Cape You're going to be in for 10 hours, so you better have food, water, and some extra gas. Right. Yeah. And nobody was ready for, you know... Yep. They, they didn't have... I know I don't know how easy it is to get topped off with a tanker when you're outside your normal scheduled fuel delivery stuff like that but apparently they weren't expecting that kind of you know yeah traffic well I don't know um it's 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 definitely an interesting problem to see um you know and and there's uh, I'm sure it was like this in other spots I mean like my dad he lives out in Indianapolis area they were in the path of totality, so of you know he just went out on his front lawn and he could see it, you know. Which hey, if you live in that path, it's perfect. But you know you've got. But he was telling me that all the news channels and everything everywhere were saying if you don't have to go anywhere today, don't. don't. Like like just stay home, and uh, you know. it's just kind of crazy to think. But to a greater point, what what Monday kind of showcased for me was these were all people that were able to take off work, had an interest in it, and were going south. And you saw the amount of traffic that happened just from that. I wasn't able to take off to go south. I had my tax meeting. You were busy. You were sleeping. You know, it's that sort of thing. It's like there were, what percentage of the population drove to go see the path of totality? And then right. when you stop and think about that's a small percentage of the population that did that, and the traffic backed up that bad. The infrastructure couldn't even handle that right. to get them moving. What happens in case of an actual legitimate emergency? Well, first of all, we're all boned. Well, yeah, we're yeah. all. But <laughs> in those situations, though, too, if you're having to evacuate a city, yeah, they turn all lanes one direction. Now that's valid. You're right. You know, the, the, we wouldn't have eastbound and westbound sixty four. Right. It would you just would, be everybody. You, they would get all semis off the. Yeah. You know, it would just be passenger vehicles and buses and. Uh, but still, that would take hours to happen for them to yeah. set it up. So you'd probably already have uh, a lot of bad congestion. Anyway, I mean, it, it's never going to be pretty. No. But you know, there are things they can do to help. Uh, you know, take care of those situations. I watch a lot of disaster movies. <laughs> you know, and it's like when you start seeing everyone going the same direction, regardless of the lane, you know the world is fucked. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Well, you bring that up. You're right. Walking Dead. I remember in the very beginning of that show, you know, when he's going into Atlanta, all the cars are coming one direction. So. The West Wing, when they had that yep. Uh, yep. meltdown situation. Yeah. No. To speed it up, everything goes one direction. Interesting. Pull all commercial vehicles off the road, nothing but passenger and buses. And if you have a four-wheel drive vehicle, just start using lawns, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, I've got a sneeze tickle. building, I know, I know. and it's like, damn it, I lost you know, it. Watermelon, watermelon. Um. <laughs> it's all this beautiful pollen flying around. Oh out there. God, I've been ha- I've been in the point now. We're at the point of the year that I'm taking my Allegra pill in the morning. You know? Well, plus, I was doing some moving today. Oh, so you got dust? I and got dust and everything. Yeah, you yeah. know, so 
fun for me. There you go. This is smoking really well. Yeah. I am enjoying this. Um, I did a retro hail. And, uh, Must have been smooth. I didn't hear you. Hmm. Slight. Very, very slight on the back end. pepper on the back end. But but <clears throat> for the most part, no, it's very smooth. Yeah. And uh, I really the like the petite experience. Corona really size good. like this, yeah. you know, on a Cuban. Um, the boulevards were the torpedo. Yeah. Uh, but this, and I can, still can't remember the other sticks I got. Were, the other sticks were this size. Okay. And everyone's like, why would you get the? It's like, first of all, you're really going to taste the tobacco well. Yeah. There's no just filler crap in there. It's yeah. just, you know, um, and I was really happy with all of them. Perfect. I mean, look, if if you're happy with it, that's all that matters. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's, it is, it's smoking really well. I have a few Cubans at home <laughs> that are just chilling in the humidor that I probably should look at because uh, I haven't done anything with those in a while. And uh, I want to make sure that they're still okay because... <laughs> um, I did have one, one time that was chilling in the humidor, and it got a little... Funky? Funky. Uh, so I need... It's a good way of putting it. A little funky. Uh, I mean, you can't so age gotta, a cigar forever. No. No. And a lot of this is just because I would forget my humidor is down in the basement. Yeah. I'd walk out and leave, and we'd discuss, oh, shit, I was going to bring this or X, that. I have you know? Y. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I moved... This back the other day, and I'm like, now it's up here in the old fake garage. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no windows, no nothing, and it's perfectly, you know, climate controlled there. So there you go. Because I barely go through humidity with this thing. I use the beads. Okay. And I have not filled my cup. They're still pretty expanded in a year. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I mean, for for hey. a cheaper humidor, it really does hold it. Good. But it was in the basement in a dark area so it was nice and cool yeah not cold but you know uh that helps and no well, windows and around it or basements nothing. tend to hold on to some humidity anyway yeah yeah anything. there's so, yeah yep. well in st louis depending upon the time of the year is either stupid dry or stupid humid so we know. didn't really have a lot of freezing cold months so no. the furnaces weren't just hammering all the time for sure you know yeah drying everything out which is good. It helped keep the power bills down a little bit. Yeah, the woolly worms were bit. wrong this year, from what I understand. Oh, well, okay. Then. Everyone I said saw were predicting a bad winter, but we just didn't have it here. Well, that's good. Yeah. I, mean, I would prefer that. So. Yes. I'm old now. I don't like that cold shit. No, no. That's why I'm know. moving to Georgia. I was going to say, you're going you're gonna to eliminate a season, yes. basically. Most of a season, yeah. Most of a season. So, <coughs> well, why don't we do this? Because... This is a spinoff of something that Noah and I did. It's time for the Villiger Cigars Entertainment Report. Brought to you by... Villiger. Villiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world. Founded in 1888 and still family owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Villiger Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. Okay, so when I had Noah on the show, uh, b- b- not last week, but the week prior, um, we did our ranked top 10 favorite gangster movies. Right. And knowing that I was going to be doing this with you, and knowing that you're a big horror movie buff, yes, I'm like, you know what? Let's go ahead and do our top 10 ranked horror movies. Right. And so uh, I sprung that on you. I was I was <laughs> quick to get mine prepared. I mean, I figured you knew what you were doing, but uh, I, on the other hand, I kind of was uh, voice texting into my phone as <laughs> I was driving here, and I came up with a list. And I came up with a much longer list, to be honest, than I thought I would. Um, and truthfully, uh, I <laughs> came up with more for this than I did for gangster movies. There's is, a lot more. I mean, there is really, a lot more. There are not as many gangster movies as you really think there are. True. Um, it feels like there are, but there's not. And maybe some of them, kind of like I, I included Pulp Fiction on the list. It's kind of like, eh, right. you know, like I've had, uh, like Luke reached out to me and was like, dude, 
how do you include Pulp Fiction, but you don't put The Dark Knight, the Christian Bale with uh, Heath Ledger as the Joker? He's like, and I'm like, I thought about that one, but I count that more of a superhero movie than right. I do a gangster movie. But I see where he's coming from with that. Right. Because the gangsters, they played a very large role. The Joker obviously taking over the crime families and everything took a large role. So I understand why he would put that out there. But I thought it was more of a superhero movie. But on the flip side, I can understand why along those lines you might say, eh, Pulp Fiction doesn't count. So anyway, with that being said, there might be some movies on my list that you're going to be like, I don't know if I count that as a horror movie, but I tried to keep my list as horror-ish as possible and take those um, kind of... uh, arguable ones and throw them in my uh, honorable mention category. I think I've only got one that people might be like is that on the fringe of horror? But when you think about the director yeah. it makes more sense. Okay. Okay. Well by the way I have my nice tasty beverage from QT. QT where you can get an extra large iced tea for less than two bucks. Can't there complain. you go. <laughs> Maybe I'll get them to sponsor the beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so do you want to go first? Go with your number 10? All right. I've got a lot of honorable mentions, too, but I'll just give you the 10. We can do the honorable mentions after we right. do the 10. Because I don't want to, like, spoil it by saying, like, what is not on the list. You okay. Know? So okay. I think a lot of people are going to notice a theme with mine, too. Okay. Uh, if you can put it in the comments what you think the theme is, go right ahead. For me, number 10 is Prom Night from 1980. Okay. 1980, not the recent one they did with... No, that was crap. Okay, okay. I don't know if I've seen that one. I remember it... I think I remember the box. See, this is the thing I... I you I'm remember not, seeing it at the movie uh, at video the, store. The video store, exactly. That's what I was about to say. Is it... He's. It's like a dude in a I'm mask, not, or like a ski mask yeah. with a knife, you know, coming up like through there. And I'm not... A, Jimmy Lee Curtis. I'm not a big horror guy, but... I do remember walking through the horror section at the video stores back growing up. And, dude, I'll say, some of the box art and some of the posters and shit. Was always had, better. They had the best box art and posters. I mean, this now, is back sadly, in the day of the paintings and everything. Some of the best box art was some of the shittiest, shittiest movies. Shittiest movies, I'm sure. It's like they spent the whole budget on the on artist. the artist. But, you know, hey, it got, it got you to watch it, mm-hmm. potentially. You know, um, so my first one, number 10, uh, it's one that admittedly the ending doesn't hold up all that well. And admittedly, it might not be it, it, people might rip me apart for this one, but I have a soft spot for it because it came out while I was working at the movie theater in high school and I watched it and there were there was parts of it that were just so freaking good. And like I said, the ending probably wasn't the best, but uh, but I like a lot of the people that are in it, which is the 1999 remake of A House on Haunted Hill, starring Jeffrey Rush, Ali Larder's in it, Famke Jensen, mm-hmm. Famke Jensen, uh, Tay Diggs is in it, yeah, Chris Kattan, oh yeah, yeah, I, I mean, forget about him. Lisa Loeb is in it. She was. She was a Channel Three reporter. Okay, listed. I was going I thought she was in the house. Or something. Yeah, but like, I mean, but dude, like, there's some some legit actors in this movie, and some of the sequences in the first, I'd say half to three quarters of that movie are just super creepy. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the ending probably was a little weak, but that's why it's number ten because it's my it's my guilty pleasure favorite on this list. But I couldn't rank it any higher than 10. <laughs> Although, number 9 is also a super guilty pleasure. So, anyway. What's your number 9? My number 9 is Christine. Mm, the car. Yeah. Okay. That is a good movie. That's a Stephen King, right? Uh, Stephen King directed by uh, John Carpenter. Okay. Okay. That's, uh... Now, she what was the deal with that? She was she died and came back as the car. No, uh, the it car, was just or? a and, and it never really went into it too much. I mean, it was evil coming through the the line of the assembly plant. Oh, okay, it okay. killed a guy. Ah, and it just really killed you know and took over everybody you know who owned it. Okay, okay. My number nine is my second 
super guilty pleasure horror movie. It's one that, uh, <laughs> look, dude, I know it's fucking stupid, but Freddy vs. Jason <laughs> is my favorite of all the Night of the Living, or no, Night on Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, Friday the 13th movies. Although Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D is also really, really funny. Um, but uh, but Freddy vs. Jason, it was like the culmination of fan like interest like the the fan base said we want this and the movie th- you know companies were like the part okay, the party great. in the cornfield oh dude it's the where it's just like wham 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 and like freddy's like That's a, you know just, just uh bringing uh jason into the nightmare realm and you know and and what was it there were they there was a dude that was basically like in like shaggy from scooby-doo Right? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. It's been a minute since I've watched it. But, like... You had uh, the one chick from uh, Destiny's Child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so stupid. And I loved it so much. Because yeah. it was just... It was exactly what you wanted from a team-up movie. Right. You don't look at this and say, like, okay, we're going to get, like, a masterpiece of cinema. No, 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 no. This is everything cheesy that I wanted from this meetup. So. It was like Batman Forever, but a horror movie. Yeah, it was great. Well, made bet, a lot of money. Better you know, than Batman Forever, it. but yeah, exactly, exactly. It made money, and they followed it up with what Jason in Space, which I was like, what the fuck? That one was bad. Yeah, that one was really bad. Anyway, all right, moving on. What's your number eight? Number eight for me is The Thing, nineteen eighty-two. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's my fringe one. Is that sci-fi? Is it horror? But that's why I didn't put it on. I counted it more sci-fi. And the reason I put it on is because of again, this was a John Carpenter movie. Yeah, I could see that. And see the that. music was really tense. Uh, really got you, you know. But I went with horror. I almost threw you off and asked to do top ten sci-fi. That I would have needed a few days. For but I was like, me. no, he'll be able to do horror real quick. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's why I did not count that one. I counted it more sci-fi. But I think it can straddle and go either way. It had enough gore to go horror, It's I the believe. bi-curious movie. It can go either way. <laughs> so <laughs> it did have gore. That's true. All right. Well, my number eight is also one that I don't know how you would classify it. I'm classifying it as horror. I guess you could classify it as maybe like action to a degree, um, but I'm going with the original Jaws. That's a horror movie. <laughs> it is straight up, dude. I mean, <laughs> pretty much everyone who lists lists of horror movies counts that as a horror. Movie. Okay, well then I'm counting. And I, I read movie. all those lists and this and that, and everyone really counts that as a horror. Okay, well then I'm going with it because, dude, I it is. So well done in the way. And I know that it was for budgetary purposes and everything else that they had to hide the shark until the end and everything. It was so well done and it built all that tension. And then when it finally happens, you're just like, oh, my God. And like everything's going nuts. And, you know, it it was just such a well done movie. Yeah. And the sequels, they didn't live up. Although, again, I, I didn't even put it on my honorable mention list, but. Cheesy movie soft 3D. spot. 3D is so great. Louis Gossett Jr., we just lost him. Just passed, and I don't know if I talked about this on the show or not. It's the worst movie, but I love it so much because it's Jaws and SeaWorld. Jaws and SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you get a better movie concept than Jaws in SeaWorld. Yeah. So it just it was so good. So, yeah. Um, Jaws, the original Jaws, though, is my number eight. Okay. So my number seven is the 2004 Dawn of the Dead. Oh, with the zombie baby. Yeah. Oh, my God. That that freaked me out. When I saw that, that freaked me. Great cast. Was a great cast. That Phil was, from um, Modern Family was a douche. He was. You're right. I forgot he was in that. Yeah. It was a Zack Snyder movie, wasn't it? Uh, Didn't he direct that? I believe so, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, what's his name uh, wrote it? Uh, the guy who did Guardians of the Galaxies now. Uh, oh, Gunn. James Gunn. Gunn. James Gunn. Yeah. I, think, I think he wrote it. I'll be damned. Uh, so, yeah, it had a lot of star power on the front and back end of it. It really also kind of, that with 28 Days Later, kind of really kickstarted that whole zombie thing again, mm-hmm. you know? 
And uh, man, it was it was good. I remember it had a great soundtrack too. It did, and I remember going back when that hit. I watched it, and I was like, "Okay, this is cool." Now I'm gonna go watch the Romero version, and the Romero version was not as good. No, <laughs> um, it had that weird kind of. There was like a really weird trippy sequence where they're going through the mall, but you know, but it's one of those things. I got to thinking about it as I'm watching this. I'm like, you know, a mall. While if you could secure it, it's, tactically it's it's poor because you've got a lot of entry and, and exit points. But you're right; if you could secure it, a mall could be a really cool place to hide out during a, a zombie apocalypse. As long as it's a up to date mall, most malls now are shit. True. You might not have no food or anything That's in true. there. <laughs> All the food court bays are empty. <laughs> it's like oh shit, I'm living on Auntie Anne's. <laughs> um. So my number seven is one that uh, it's going to be a little obscure, and um, it's one that I watched with uh, <laughs> with an old girlfriend, um, and um, it's from 2016, and it's uh, it's a Korean horror movie called Train to, to Busan. Busan. Oh yeah, I've not seen it. I heard it's a great Fuck, zombie dude, movie. Dude, this is the best zombie movie it's ranked up there in a lot of it lists. is so good and the only way i watched it we had to watch it with subtitles um so it wasn't dubbed or anything but it is so good it is creepy as hell it's a zombie movie that takes place entirely on a, a train. train and so they're like going car to car trying to get away from the zombies and everything but it's this it's a man with his uh, estranged daughter and other passengers become trapped on a speeding train during a zombie outbreak in South Korea. Holy crap. It's unreal. Like, it's one of the best zombie movies I've ever seen. I've heard so, a lot about it. I've just never had a chance to stream it. Train to Busan. B-U-S-A-N. If you're into zombie movies and you haven't seen this yet, do yourself a favor and watch it. It's, it's amazing. So, that's my number seven. Uh, my number six... Is uh, I'm actually going to move something here. Uh oh, he's calling an audible. I'm calling an audible here. Uh, I'm going to go with Scream for number six. Mm, okay. Um, when it came out, it kind of re. Basically, this is the reason. It was a slightly above average horror movie. Yeah, but it brought horror back in the '90s. I would agree with that. You know, kind of with, re- with a more with slasher. a more leg- with a more legitimate story behind it and everything not just uh well and it was kind of know. tongue-in-cheek too because it kind of like it threw it talked about the rules of the right, slasher right. movie and things of that nature right so um yeah i'll be honest when that first hit it i wasn't really again i wasn't a horror movie guy it really didn't do much for me um but when i started i started working at the movie theater in high school Right when, can I do this? Can I do this? Oh, God, I'm not going to be able to do this. <laughs> um, trying to slide the band off of the cigar. Oh, we're just going to peel. Anyway, and um, anyway, I, uh, son of a bitch, this did not want to come off. Um, mine came off pretty easy. Yeah, I know. I watched you do it, and that's when I was like, oh, I'll go ahead and take mine off, too. And it's like, no, nope, no, nope, it's not going to want to do that. Anyway, um, at mine, I, I started working, there it goes, started working at the movie theater when Scream 2 came out. Okay. So I uh, quickly caught up, watched the first one, watched the second one. And I liked them, but they're not like, again, slasher flicks aren't my thing. What I did like, though, was the fact that it had kind of that self-reflective, tongue-in-cheek kind of thing of like, this is going against the rules or this and that and whatever. I liked that aspect of those yeah. movies. And like I said, I mainly put it on there just because it really rebrought a high-budget yeah, high grossing, you know. But see, back. correct me if I'm wrong. Horror movies these days, you don't see a lot of high budget horror movies. It's no. like it's keep the budget low, put it out, and it makes a ton of money because the budget is low, and so you can crank them out and do more right. with them. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, the bigger the budget. Just because I've been watching a lot of icons unearthed with mm-hmm. like these mo- where it goes behind all the movies and stuff, the bigger the budget, the more hands get involved, and they always fuck up the story. I think that tends to happen with a lot of movies, right. not just horror. Oh, movies. right. Yeah, that, exactly. but I mean that's 
because they're they're doing like Lord of the Rings, the Batman movies. Oh, okay. You know all these other you know, and it's like the bigger the budgets got after the first one was successful, the more they started fucking with things. Like Batman Forever. Right. Yeah. Okay. Actually, Batman Forever did extremely well in the theater. Well, I'm sure it did. It was Batman and Robin yeah, that, that really was, went off it the rails. Was really bad. Yeah. And you know, I'm gonna say this. Maybe a hot take, maybe not. I thought they screwed up with The Hobbit making that as many movies as they did. I think that should have just been a solid, just, you know, go for it. I don't, I watched, I don't think The Hobbit needed to be as many movies. I, I don't. I suffered through Lord of the Rings. Oh, I like the original trilogy. So I didn't even do The Hobbit. I like the original trilogy. I, just, I, did, I have not watched the extended cut, though. But the original trilogy, I don't have two and a half days to kill on movies. But, but the original trilogy, for its time, man, that, that's good, good watching right there. I'm watching that Icons Unearthed or whatever it's called yeah. on Vice. And they're doing at 8 o'clock is Batman and then at 9 o'clock is Lord of the Rings. Yeah. On Wednesdays. Okay. And so the Lord of the Rings one, man, Peter Jackson was just crazy. <laughs> you know, it's like everyone's just like, dude, what are we doing? You know, I yeah. mean. He <laughs> oh, he was making like full suits of armor that these guys are having to wear. I mean, he was going so far into the authenticity of it all. And uh, last night's show, they were talking about like basically the people doing all the computer animation and stuff, like all the battle scenes yeah. and everything. They went from, like, five to ten people to, like, 200 to do this movie. And they're trying to get licensed product, and, you know, Apple shut them down, and the guy gets a call from Steve Jobs just, like, cussing them out, you know, and everything. Like, you're trying to steal my people and this and that. Oh you know, you'll gosh. never get the licenses for this. And, I mean, it, it, it's really interesting. Huh. Uh, even though I didn't care for the movies, watching the behind-the-scenes shit yeah. is really cool. Okay, okay. And apparently Viggo Mortensen yeah. is just a stud. They're like... Well, I don't doubt that. You know, he, he wouldn't leave the <laughs> set, you know, if it looked like it was going to be trouble getting him back in time tomorrow. He'd just camp out and sleep there and shit or, you know, getting to know the horses, like staying with the horses all the time. So when they had to do the scenes, the horse was totally comfortable with him. Well, that's cool. Shit like that. You know, getting his tooth busted out yeah. and saying, fuck it, you know, fix it in post-op. I don't need to go to the dentist. You nice, know? nice. I mean, apparently he was just... Totally cool. Okay, okay. Well, I know the two Hobbit guys, uh, not the main two, but yeah, Pippin and Mary, whoever played those guys, uh, they want to be buried with him. <laughs> because um, in the books, I guess, those characters were buried with uh, it's a Aragorn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so they, they basically are saying that they need to be buried with Viggo Mortensen when it all goes down. So, I don't know. I think that's kind of funny myself, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so did you do your number six? Yeah, because that's where I did the uh That's where you did audible. the scream. Okay, you did scream. My number six is also another zombie movie, and I got to give credit to it, man. It's the original uh, Night of the Living Dead. Okay. George Romero. Yeah. I, I remember watching that, black and white, and... Uh, it's just, it's got, I think because of the black and white, it's got that real creepy factor and everything to it. Yeah. And you think you're watching this and it's all going down and it just, it just gets so messed up and you get the little girl that's the zombie and she kills the parents and this and that and whatever. And, uh, you've got, you've got the racial the, overtones, tons of racial overtones. And then right at the end, you get the one survivor that, that makes it out of the house and Bam! Just taken down because the military guy sees him and and no, they weren't even military. Remember, oh, they were just redneck Hoosiers and oh, cops it? and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. It was like a posse. Yeah, you know, the, was cleaning take, up the town and and the, and the one survivor is the black guy. And I don't. know. <laughs> they didn't even try to they figure didn't even out. Try. It. They just took him down. It's so, walking boom. Yeah. So uh, it's it's just and it's so sad because it's like he made it through all that just to be taken out like that and. Yep. Uh, Anyway, no, I, there, there's so much that movie. I really do enjoy the original Night of the Living Dead. Well, I'm going with another original from my number five. Okay. I am going with the 1980 Friday the 13th. Okay, okay. The Mrs. Voorhees special. I was going to say, the first one when it was his mom. Yeah. Okay. And one of the reasons I really enjoyed that and a couple of these others that we'll get to, there was nothing extraordinary there was nothing supernatural this was just a 
mother that lost her son and lost it. Yep. And all those murders could have happened. You know, it it wasn't like she was flying through the air or nothing. And she was just stabbing yeah, people in the dark <laughs> at a camp. You know, yeah. and the you know every one of those kills could have happened by a woman her age. Okay. Uh, you know, those are the ones that get me more. Okay. That that could have happened. You know, at that time period. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I uh, you know I just. Uh, I respect both series, Night of the Living – or, God, I keep doing that. Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. I respect both of them. They made a shit ton of money, and I know a lot of people really love them. They've just never – oh, there went my band. Uh, they've, there's just never been – I haven't had a real, like, love and attachment to it because I've just never been into – I scare super easy. Mm-hmm. I'm super jumpy. So I was, I was never really into the Nightmare movies. None of them are on my list. Okay, okay. New Nightmare is pretty good. Or Yeah, that's the one, the, the Wes Craven's New Nightmare, okay. where it's like set in the real world, right. and they're making like a Nightmare movie and everything. That was good. Again, so weak at the end. It's like they got to the end, and they were like, what do we A, do? we don't know what to do, and B, we don't have the budget to do it. So let's just do this real quick. And they just kind of ended it. But there were some parts of that movie that are really good. Um but anyway, I just don't have the attachment to those movies that a lot of people do mm-hmm. that are my age or slightly older than me. Because I just, it's, again, I'm jumpy. So, like, the idea of slasher movies, they thrive on jump scares. And jump scares right. piss me off because all I do is just like, mm, you know. So, I don't like it. <laughs> I like something that makes me think. So, um, my number five is a classic. I like, I love the Universal Monster movies. Mm-hmm. Love them, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna see that in the next next five here, uh, not entirety, but a portion. But number five is Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, love that one. Love the Creature from and, the Black Lagoon. And I don't understand why it must be a licensing issue. No one's ever redone it. No one's done anything other than that movie with that creature. Yeah. Um, well, it had a few sequels, but 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 did it? I don't remember it ever having a sequel. There were some sequels to that one a long time ago. Nothing okay. more recent. Now, now I will say the closest we've come to a recent version. Remember the movie Shape of Water? Yeah, it came out a couple of years ago. That was kind of a creature from the Black Lagoon love story ish kind of thing, because um, the woman she fell in love with the creature, which looked a lot like the creature from the Black Lagoon. I thought right, it wasn't. But it was close, but it didn't have that horror element to it that the creature did. I, You're right. I don't know why Universal doesn't do more with that character. I don't know if it's... They may have lost the rights to it or something. You never know. Possibly. A lot of those things get really weird after years. they always include years. that movie when they put out like box sets of mo- the, the movies and everything. They always include it. So like They might not have going forward. That could be. Maybe they have distribution of the like, old ones, but uh, not really. Current that icons unleashed deal. The yeah. guy that owns the r- movie rights to Batman is just some no name guy that went to work for DC because he said as a kid, I'm going to get the movie rights to Batman yeah. one day and, and bought it for like 50 grand. Wow, because after super, you know, they go into it all like after Superman with Christopher Reeve, they're like, oh, okay, we've got our, you know, that's it. No, you know, we don't need any more. Mm-hmm. And it, it, they just weren't thinking, thinking ahead, right. Well, that's why Sony still has Spider-Man, and Disney and Marvel have to, you know, work with Sony because Marvel had just gone through bankruptcy. They needed some cash, so they sold the right film rights to Spider-Man to Sony. And as long as Sony still does something with it every once in a while, they yeah. keep it. So it's it's yeah, it's bizarre. So well, anyway, that's uh, my number five. It's Creature from the Black Lagoon. My number four is more a movie I think you would really like. You need to check out. We've discussed it, I believe, and you haven't seen it. Uh, Prince of Darkness came out in the late 80s. It's a John Carpenter movie. Okay. It's more of a thinker horror movie. Okay. With a lot of uh, religion and physics and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, it, it's, yeah, a little bit of zombieism type stuff, possession. Okay. A lot of gore. But right. uh, it's it's more of a, th- more. it's part of uh, John Carpenter's trilogy of the apocalypse. Okay. It's The Thing, Prince of Darkness, and... Uh, in the mouth of madness. Okay. All right. 
So Prince of Darkness. <clears throat> I'll have to check that out. Uh, my number four is another Universal Monster movie. 1931's Dracula. Bela Lugosi, man. That movie, it's just dripping with vampire goodness. It's like Bela Lugosi does the performance of his life. And it's just... It's, it, I saw it real young. You know, I, I was... I got into the monster, the Universal monster movies, because the library, believe it or not, had a series of books, and each one was a different monster. And basically, each book just kind of recapped what happened in that movie. Mm-hmm. But it was like in the kids section or some shit. Right. And so like I'm looking at these, I'm like, this is awesome, you know. And so then I watched the movies, and that one. But what's nice about those is they have that horror kind of element. But let's be real, they're 1931. They're it's not scary, Mm-mm. you know, so like a kid can watch it and it might be a little scary for a kid. But, you know, as an adult, you're just able to appreciate it. But I, I, I love that movie. It's so good. And Renfield, when they get there and they're looking and they, they open up the boat and, and he's just at the bottom of the stairs doing the <laughs> kind of grinning and everything. And it's like, this is great. I love this. So, yeah. Nope. 1931's Dracula. All right. Uh, my number three is another old original uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. <laughs> I knew it. I'm driving over here. I text you, and I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of what he's going to name. <laughs> and for whatever reason, Texas Chainsaw popped onto my head, and I'm just like, oh, God. I'll be honest, dude. There's a lot of reasons why I cannot stand those movies. Aside from just it's just, just the gore factor, There's just it's not just the gore. It's the griminess, the dirtiness, and the, like, just foul disgustingness of the family and all the other, and just everything. It's just, like, it feels so filthy, and I just, and I get it. I get that's what they're going for, but, man, it's mm-hmm. it's, it's not a for me thing, but, you know, but <laughs> it adds a lot to the movie. Right. You know, so, yeah. Um. Okay, so... That was what? Your number three? Yeah. My number three is The Omen with Gregory Peck. Okay. The first one. So good. Sequels, not so much. I know they've got this new one that's coming out. Right. The first really, Omen. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but that original one, man, that original one with Gregory Peck was so good. And was that th- that was the one where the guy got decapitated by the pane of glass. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It, and it like came down, and it deca- and his head is like rolling as the glass is going by. His head's like rolling on the glass. I'm like, holy shit, you know? I mean, it's just, it's it's just a crazy movie. But it's where you learn: mm-hmm. a, don't ki- name your kids Damien, and b, check the scalp line for the little triple six birthmark because if you have it, you've got the div- uh, devil's kid. Just saying. All right. Number two. Who does number two work for? My number two is My Bloody Valentine, 1981. <laughs> you like the 80s slasher flicks. I, I grew up watching them on a it. dark hill in a secluded house with my grandma. Dear God. Yeah. You've talked about that before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they, yeah. they all hold a uh, a place in my heart. Okay. Um, and again, nothing supernatural about this movie. No, it, it's all feasible. It, it's all feasible, all rational kills and scares and this and that. Okay. Well, my number two is my last of my Universal Monster movies. And uh, there's just something about the visual of it and everything. I love 1933's Claude Rains in The Invisible Man. Um, he's all wrapped up in the bandages. He comes into the place and he needs a room and he's just kind of a dick. And then they go up there and, you know, he's unwrapping the bandage and, and like for the time, the special right. effects for the time of the bandages unwrapping and there being nobody there and everything like that. Right. That was crazy. It was freaking nuts. And like, it's just such a, I, I like that movie so much, but it really is the visuals for that. That just like do it for me. And, um, I, I yeah, I really dig the original Invisible Man. I have not seen, I have not seen the 2020 version. 
I haven't either. It gets ranked up there a lot, and it's like there's a lot of movies that have come out recently that get ranked really highly that I've watched, and uh-huh. it's like these aren't horror movies. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like like Midsummer. That is on everyone's list now. Yeah, it, it's like what? Yeah, <laughs> what? yeah. It, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't. I, I've never seen that either, so I don't know. But um, it's like two hours of crap for a few killings. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I did see Hereditary. That one's all. That one tends to get mentioned a lot lately yeah. too. But that one, it just it mind fucked me more than anything. And right. I was like, I'm not feeling this. <laughs> like, and by the end of it, I was really not feeling it. Right. Um, that's when I had to like go and cleanse my mental palate and see Jojo Rabbit. So, which that's that was a weird thing. Cleansing my mental palate by going and watching, watching a kid whose imaginary friend was Happy Hitler. Yeah. It's like probably wasn't the best idea. But it, it did have Scarlett Johansson movie. in it, it though. It did. It did indeed. Uh, uh, so now we're back to my number one. We're on number one. And if you've noticed a trend here. I have indeed. Uh, my number one is the 1978 Halloween. The original John sense Carpenter. With the trend. Yep. Yep. And it kind of birthed the the slasher yeah, movie. Yeah, it, it really kind of did. Yeah. So no, that makes sense. That Brought makes Jamie sense. Lee Curtis into the world. It did. You know, back when she was a smoke show. <laughs> now, manlier than me. <laughs> but a smoke show then. But anyway, Activia. Um. For but, the uh, <laughs> for the longest time, it was the highest grossing independent film ever made. Really? Hmm. Mm. I guess I could see that because I would imagine the budget on that was probably relatively small. Yeah. All the leaves had to be recollected in California after each shoot to be used again because they're supposed to be in Illinois. Oh, that's funny. That's so funny. Um, And they used the William Shatner mask. Yep. <laughs> um, So my number one, for those of you who, who know me and have paid attention over the years, whenever with this subject comes up, uh, my top horror movie... Is the Exorcist? I was going to say the Exorcist. It's yeah. the Exorcist. That movie, when I saw it the first time, by the end of it, I was just like blown away. I've seen it in the theater a couple times. I remember when they re-released it somewhere in the neighborhood of like 2000, 2001. Mm-hmm. They did that re-release where they added in a few things, and one of the things they added in was when, in, in kind of near the beginning, when the when they're in the dark kitchen and the flames rear up or whatever. Um, they added like the shadow of that statue that the priest sees in what is it, Saudi Arabia or where Iran or Iraq or whatever um, in uh, in one of the shadows. So you see okay. that and you're like, oh shit, you know. And but it's a split second. I mean, you bear. It's just enough for your eyes to catch it and your brain to go, wait, did I just see? And then it's like gone. And uh, but it, those little things, it just oh, but dude, that movie just mind fucks you Plus, so bad. It holds a place for anyone who lives in the St. Louis area. True. Exactly. I mean, it happened here. Yep. Yep. And uh, I don't know. I just like it because it's got that sense of foreboding, and it's 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 horror, but it's not jump scare horror. It's some some there's maybe some jump scares. There's yeah. a few, but it, there's so much more to it than just that. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Um. But it's such. I I I love it. Such a good movie, and uh, also one where sequels were not needed and yet produced. So. <laughs> Um, what are you going to do? So, right. So let's talk uh, honorable mentions. What have you got? Uh, you some, don't have those written down. Do well, you? I've got them scratched out. Somewhere. Oh, okay. Uh, Phantasm 2. Okay. I don't know that one. That one's a good one. The first two were really good, I thought. Okay. Um, let's see. Another honorable mention was uh, another 80s slasher, The Burning. I don't know that one It was all. the uh, acting debut debut of one George Costanza. <laughs> <laughs> and he is totally George Costanza in this movie, too. Really? Yeah, as a teenager. Okay, okay. He did a McDonald's commercial, too. Yeah. And uh, he like kind of had that. hair. That's funny, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else what was I going to go with? Um, not the original Night of the Living Dead was going to be one of my, you know, uh, The Exorcist was going to be an honorable mention. Okay. Um you're not going to see movies like The Sixth Sense or anything like that on yeah, my list. Yeah, that's more of a thriller. Yeah, you know, it kind of uh, brings in the the supernatural, but I would say it's more of a thriller. Like they they put uh, 
Silence of the Lambs on a lot of the lists. That is not a horror movie. It's a crime movie. Right. That's a thriller. It's a, it's a thriller. It's a crime movie. It's, right. It's, it's a police procedural kind of thing. It's, right. It's not a not a horror movie. No, not no. by any means whatsoever. So uh, I had interview in the, with the vampire. Okay. On the list, um, I really like that movie. I just uh, and I know it's vampires, so you could say it's horror, but like I don't know. I just I I don't. I don't. There's a lot of s- there's a lot of story. I think it's a a one that straddles horror and drama. Right. So I would call it more of a like drama than a horror. A romanticized horror. Yes. So like I I was kind of like eh whatever. Um one that is definitely an 80s movie <laughs> through and through. Um again, just didn't make the cut. The Lost Boys. I was on the fence about that one too. I didn't even write it, but The Lost Boys. Yeah. I mean you know, and for an 80s, dude, and it's got that epic dude shirtless playing the sax and everything like that. I mean, I've seen so many memes with that guy. It's ridiculous. But, yeah. like, it's such a, like, quintessential 80s movie. This town's being overrun by vampires, and who can stop them? Corey Feldman. Well, you, you know? know who directed that? That, uh. Joel Schumacher. Who did Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Yep. yep. I was like, I know this. I know this. But, uh, no, also a really good movie. Um, here's one. I don't know if you've seen it or not. I watched it. It's definitely more, I would consider it more of a comedy than a horror movie, but it definitely has horror elements to it. Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh, I love, that's one of, Tucker and Dale versus Evil is amazing. I completely forgot about that, but yes, it's, it's it's so stupid, but it's just, it's great. And again, really, it could have had you know. Yes, because, it was realistic. Because the thing is, it's 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 a horror movie because like bad things happen to people, gory things. happen But the to people. thing is, it's all a misunderstanding. The whole thing is a giant accidents misunderstanding. and misunderstanding. And it's just so funny to watch this. Those thing guys unfold. are hilarious. Those so, two, Tucker and Dale, are hilarious. Tucker, Tucker and Dale versus Evil is, is a definite. If you haven't yes. watched it, you need to watch it. Yes. Um. Another one that I kind of counted more as a thriller, but I, I like it, so maybe it could have been, but The Birds, Alfred Hitchcock, The Birds. Yeah. I mean, it's a creature feature. It is. Um, I, I, again, I kind of counted it more as like, you know, a thriller, but it, you could see it. Yeah. The original Godzilla. I love the original Godzilla. Um, either the original Japanese version from, I think, 54, or you could do... Um, the recut American version with Raymond Burr from, I think it was maybe a couple of years later, 56 or 58, you know, that they, they cut uh, Raymond Burr into the movie so that it would have the appeal for the American audience. But, yeah, the original Godzilla, it's like, dude, I don't need, I don't need him fighting other monsters. I don't need him. I don't need Mecha Godzilla. I just, I just want to see Godzilla come out of the ocean, trash the shit out of Tokyo, and go away, you know? <laughs> That's all I want to see. I just want to see destruction. Right. Godzilla 85. I love that one because he stomped Bambi in the beginning. Remember that? I don't think I saw that one. Oh, dude. In the very beginning, they had the cartoon where, like, Bambi's just there and just eating little flowers. All of a sudden, boom, Godzilla's foot crushes him. And <laughs> the name of the cartoon was Godzilla versus Bambi. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, but Godzilla 85 was great because, again, there's not a lot to it other than Godzilla comes alive trashes the shit out of Tokyo and goes away. Gotcha. You know? So, anyway. Um, another one kind of creature feature you were mentioning from the 50s, The Blob. Oh, uh, yeah. Dude, I love the original Blob. Uh, Steve McQueen, you know? I like all three Blobs. I haven't seen any of the others. Uh, the second one, Son of the Blob, was a 1970-something movie. Mm-hmm. It was uh, It was directed by none other than J.R. Ewing. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, then the one in the eighties with uh, well, yeah. Matt Dillon and yeah. uh, them. That was you know. I remember I the box it. art with that, where yeah. the dude's like screaming and the blob is like over him and everything. It's like yeah. Um, but no, I just there's something about there's something about nineteen fifties kind of like cheesy horror flicks. The things you'd see as a double feature at a drive-in, you know, like invaders from outer space and shit like that. It's right. Like, I I love. That kind of like pop culture feel of it all. I forgot about a great one I love, Cabin in the Woods. Mm. 
I don't know why that slipped in my he- mind, but I apologize. It's okay. Cabin in the Woods. Uh, once again, took a, you know, jab at itself, you know, and at horror movies and everything, and, you know, yeah. just really good. Okay. And then um, my last two for the honorable mentions, because I came up with, like, fucking 18, which I was totally surprised about. Um Another one that kind of straddled the line between horror and comedy, Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Great movie. Love that movie. Um, I think it's like 20 years old. Yeah, right? it's got which it. Which is insane. Um, but it's such a good movie. And, uh, and I love the fact that it literally tells you the whole plot of the movie in the beginning. The like, you know, hey, we'll swing by, see the parents. We'll do this, we'll do that, and then we'll go down to the... the bar for a pint you know and like and that's you, what they did when you look at the the plot of the movie that, that's what they did you know so um but yeah I, I i like Shaun of the dead and then the last one you and i discussed this i think before we even started it can be classified as either sci-fi or horror uh alien yeah the original alien not aliens aliens is sci-fi action right alien though is sci-fi horror or correct and um, very good movie. It is a very good movie, and I know it scared the shit out of the the chest burster scene. You know, the none, one that got me none was of when those they, actors knew that that was going to happen. Right, so. but when they when he when the alien gets Dallas in the air vent, mm. you know, it's like he turns around and mm. you know that jump scare that you love so much. Uh-huh. You know, but yeah, that that's you, you know how my feelings on the Alien franchise. I love you know, and there's a new one of those coming out soon. Uh, Romulus, yeah. yeah. I don't know where that's streaming. I think it's coming straight to streaming. Is it streaming? I thought it was going to theaters. I don't. I can't. It's so hard to keep track of some of this. I stuff know I now. saw a trailer for it before Godzilla vs Kong: The New Empire. So maybe they are putting it so out. So they might be. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's uh, that's top ten horror movies. I mean, um, this is fun. I like doing these. Like this was a good. I'm I'm totally crediting Noah with because he he's the one who was like. Let's do top ten gangster movies, but rank them. And so I'm like, I'm running with that. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going through genres as we go. There's a lot of genres you can fun. do. Oh, dude, there's a ton. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, it's gonna be hard. Some some genres are gonna be harder, like right. comedies. Right. Oh fuck, I'm gonna have a. You'd rough almost time have to do that. like you'd almost have to do comedies of the '70s and '80s, and then '90s. You could, because that's know. the thing. It's like I have. I mean, I love '80s comedies, like. It, they're just so raunchy mm-hmm. <laughs> and wrong and and just stuff you can't get away with these days. And Hell, even some of the comedies from, like, the 2000s are right. things you can't get away with these days. No. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But um, let's talk about that uh, H. Upman there a little bit. You and I are both done, which it lasted a lot longer. We're at, like, right. a little over an hour. Yeah, and, I'm surprised because uh, I even said, well, this ain't a 45-minute Dude, stay. it lasted quite a while. And uh, I enjoyed it. it was I enjoyed very it, enjoy- too. Uh, it was a medium, solid medium, solid medium, uh, smoked well all throughout. Not a lot of flavor variation to it. No. I it, mean, it was what it, you got at the beginning is what is you had what all the you way get through. At the end. But that's kind of, you know, indicative of Cubans, you know, um, at least in my limited experience, I right. guess. But, uh, I will say burn line on it was really good. Uh, draw on it was really good. The ash held on really well. Yeah. Um, you know, it. I, I have nothing bad to say. It, it, it was a really good cigar. And, and yes, to the retrohale, you had that little bit of pepper in the back of it. You know, it just, it was a nice, but a very cedary taste to it. Which like, again, you I still mean, get almost uh, after cedary on your tongue. Yeah, which, I mean, when did you buy these? 17? 17. So they've been sitting in your humidor for like seven. seven. Almost, it was summer of 17. So nearly seven years in yeah. your humidor. Yeah, they're going to have that cedar kind of aspect to it but they held up really well yeah. um had a little bit of wrapper come off um i guess my lip must have been like maybe tacky enough that the the wrapper was fragile enough that it tore but but no issue construction wise right. whenever that happened i was kind of worried like ah fuck i just tore the wrapper now it's gonna like go to shit on me held together all the way to the end so no it yep. was it was a quality cigar i really did enjoy it thank you mike that you are nice. welcome um Anyway, so now that we've done the Villager report, let's uh, 
Let's go ahead and do this. Guess what, motherfucker? Time for three cigars we smoked and enjoyed this week. Are you even remotely prepared for this? Yeah, because oh. we were together less this past Saturday. <laughs> that's true. You got some cigars in this past Saturday. I just got to try to remember what they were. There you go. <laughs> so, well, that's what the beauty of me keeping my list is that, you know, I've been doing that. So, so why don't you go first? All right. Um, let's see. What was the first one I smoked? I smoked a uh, La Flor Dominicana uh, Lancero the other day. Okay. Um, that we picked up last weekend. I didn't smoke it Saturday because I'd smoked so many. I didn't want to, you know, I love a Lancero. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to have a fresh palate. So I smoked that here on the porch a few days ago. That was really, really good. Uh, I had that West Tampa, or let's see, what did we? Yeah, you had the West Tampa Red. Red. Yeah. Yeah, that was an extremely, extremely good smoke. And then uh, trying to think what was the uh, you picked it out for me. Uh, was it the Garofalo? Yeah. Okay, because that was that's also on my list is the okay. Garofalo La Familia Sun Grown yes. in the Robusto size. That so, was like, really good. I didn't smoke it that day that you right. and I got together. I smoked it first the next day. Okay. So that would have been Sunday morning. Sunday morning, yeah. Holy shit. I forgot just how much like spice there was that Yes. Cigar. I lit that up, and I'm smoking it while uh, I'm driving to the movie theater, because that's when I went and saw The Godfather at the movie theater. And um, I'm smoking it on the way, and I'm just like, shit, this is a freaking spice bomb. And I had forgotten it, because it had been a minute since I'd had one. And I got to the theater, and I'm like, oh, my God, I need a drink, you know? So, and yeah. See, that was one of the last ones I smoked saturday okay and that's why i was like i didn't want to smoke another one because i wouldn't be able to taste any, yeah that, you know that, differences it 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 <clears> hit <throat> really hard and and to be honest i didn't smoke another one uh until my drive home from the theater and so I, so i had some nice time in between that one and i only smoked the two on sunday and and that but that's one of them was that garofalo um my second one that uh i smoked and enjoyed this week was um the uh, uh, Olmec Double Corona that I smoked on the show with Mr. Jonathan. Okay. It's, it's, if it's, I mean, I like foundation cigars. They make really good cigars. But that Olmec is not one that I've smoked on the regular too much because it's not, I don't find it around St. Louis all the often. So when I find it, I grab them and but i kind of hang on to them a little bit because i'm like yeah i'll get to it i'll get to it i'll get to it and then you eventually, might not see it again for a while exactly and so smoking that was a nice little treat and uh it had that very padrone-esque kind of quality to it it's it's just a really really good cigar i really did enjoy that and uh then my last one that i smoked and enjoyed this week um i had um i'm, I'm high on this cigar i've smoked quite a few of them here lately uh, since I found a place that carries it, but the uh, the Kristoff Nicaragua, okay, super good cigar, very great price point, quality construction, doesn't have that shaggy foot going on anymore, you know, um, just a lot of flavor to it, and it's like nine bucks, right? So like, yeah, I've been I've been really high on the Kristoff Nicaragua lately. Awesome. So anyway, so there we go. Was that your three? Yeah, you had yeah, your two, and then the Sun Grow. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't we hear about my monthly cigars? This would normally be the time that I give some information about my monthly cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code pulpit. Thanks. While you guys are over there, make sure you check out the fucking good coffee and get yourself some of that. And if you're interested in the fucking good cigar, make sure you sign up to get the email notifications about how and when you can pre-order that. So that'll be coming soon. Otherwise, in terms of the socials, I'm on Instagram at the Cigar Pulpit. I'm on Facebook with the Pulpit Parishioners Group. You can get in on the fun there. Um, I'm on Twitter slash X and YouTube where you can watch this. And if you're interested in Pulpit Fest, August 23rd through the 25th in Palm Coast, Florida, 
Make sure you get your tickets now. It's available on Eventbrite, B-R-I-T-E dot com. And just search for Pulpit Fest and you'll find it and sign up for that. Complimentary tickets. Just need a head count. Awesome. There you go. And you're on Facebook. Yeah. I'm a member of the Prisoners you're Group. You're on the Prisoners Group. Yeah. Yeah. So. so let us know what you thought of our list. Yeah. Let us know your top. Because, you know, yeah. we're doing these lists and everything. And I got some good feedback on the gangster one. And but, there's you know, always stuff you forget about. Oh, dude. There, inevitably. Like, uh, yeah, inevitably there's something I forget about. Um, but, you know, th- th- somebody will remind me. It, it'll come, you know. Anyway. Well, again, thank you so much for the cigar, man. That was no really problem. great. Thanks for coming out. It. No, this has been fun. Joining me in the mobile studio here. It's, it's not so mobile. No. It's, it's pretty stationary. Satellite, sta- <laughs> satellite studio. There we go. We got the satellite studio here. This yes. is good. So. Yeah. Anyway, guys, well, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. I'm Mike. Everybody stay safe and stay smoky. figure out who i can have on the show to do uh top 10 favorite pornos figure it's, a, it's a show you know trey would be a good one for that dude dead on i trey was trey and that weirdo guy up north that does the voice oh noah what's his uh, alter ego oh i could have jerry pulaski on. yeah jerry pulaski yeah and trey Mack. jerry pulaski that could get weird. Mm. <laughs> that could get a little weird. I don't want animal shit in there. <laughs> Later, guys.